Good morning, I'm Justin, G0KSC from the Innova Antennas and G0KSC.co.uk website. And today we're going to be looking at fitting an N-Type female to a Westflex 103 cable. Now there's a few things before we go on here, um, just to make sure that you, you've got. Uh, it's worthwhile having all of the various tools that you're going to need. So in view here I've got some um, spanners, a um, a knife, a stainless knife for cutting away with that. There's the solder over here, which you can't see straight away. I've also got a solder iron here, which is ready to go. Uh, and then also I've got a, a small uh, tabletop vise, which is fairly he heavy, but allows me to hold certain parts while I'm doing the, uh, the jobs that I need to do. So uh, this is um, the first thing here. This is how the connector is going to look when it's supplied and you have the centre pin and all the various bits and pieces in there and once that's dismantled in order of uh, how it needs to be fitted together we have uh, this, um, the end section with the, the nut and a small washer uh, then there is uh, the rubber seal which goes over the top of that uh, the two parts to seal the centre braid and make connectivity there and then we have the, the centre pin with the insulators and this is an important part here uh, we need to make sure that that gets on in the right place now in lieu of a um, a tape measure or or steel rule I'm using a cutting mat this green cutting mat here and these sections are measured out these are, are, are 10 millimeters or one centimeter so it's fairly easy to see where you are um, I'm going to cut into the coax at 10 centimeters and run the blade around. There are other methods of doing this, uh, but uh, I've found that this is uh, works best or easiest for me, and I've got used to doing it this way, uh, rolling that around uh, the the edge of the coax. Uh, when you're cutting into that, if you feel a certain amount of, of pressure, you can feel when you cut through to the uh, the, the, the copper beneath. And it's always worth just backing off the pressure a little bit there. You don't want to cut into that because that will uh, make the, the copper weak and it will come off uh, and you won't be able to, um, uh, you, you'll have to cut it off again. The second thing is, um, as well as starting afresh if you did it that way, it's always worth accepting that the first one is going to be a dry run. Um, so just go through the motions uh, expecting to cut that off uh, if you haven't done that before, you haven't used this coax before. So now you can see the braid and you can see the, the copper um, sheath underneath it as well. Uh, firstly, uh, I could have put these on first, but I want to show um, that you can put everything on as, as you need to once the copper's been cut uh, without uh, too many problems. Uh, so that's the, the first three sections there, the, uh, the back part, uh, the washer, and then the rubber. The next part that we need to do, uh, and this is where some people get confused, is this needs to go over the copper. Uh, but it won't go over the, the, the rubber sheath. So now we can splay out this. Um, so it's pulled down and where it needs to sit. Now the next thing is, is you could cut off that copper core at that point and then slide this part over in inside. Um, I tend to try uh, where I can to put the copper sheath inside that to give better connectivity and doesn't bunch it up inside. Now this is where the first part I'm going to need to have my um, vise. So I'm just going to bring this into play. Now how I use it in this instance is the teeth are opened up to allow the centre core through but not the outer section. So I can push down, get that all the way in and now when you look at that we've, we've got it pretty much uh, where we need it to be all the way down. Uh, and now what I would need to do is to trim off using the blade again the outer edge and again it's important not to push too far and too hard to cut that um, that center cord uh, too hard so that's now uh, with the center pin out uh, I'm going to use a, a pair of long nose pliers here just to center that a little bit and get that where it needs to be now that is uh, at the moment too long. We do need to use now this plastic ring. 
Now the reason for that is that when um, this when the center core is trimmed to side and this goes over the top, you can see it's far too long at the moment. When that's soldered, when there's any uh, retraction as a result of expansion, retraction uh, and so on, the pin can't be pulled back inside the coax. That little plastic uh, washer there is going to prevent that from being pulled back into place. And by trimming down, let me just uh, take a small amount off of this, the, uh, the end section, we can then get this down to a size where this is going to sit nicely on top. It's still just a little bit too long at the moment. And I think it's always worth just cutting off that, uh, that 10 millimeters and trimming to size. Uh, so that you don't end up with it being a little bit too short on the odd occasion. So that's pretty much there. What I'm going to do is just take a, a very small amount of extra off of there. And now um, I'm, I'm going to tin the centre. Or just put a small amount of, of uh, solder onto the centre core. Just so that once it gets, once the pin's in place and there's some heat applied, it won't take too long for that to melt inside uh, and take easily the, uh, the solder that we put on from the outside too. So now we have that center hole uh, there, you can see. I'm going to just clean the soldering iron tip, um, add a new small amount on, and just apply some heat until that goes. It's not, that's, that's gone now, you can see that it's taken it now, it's all in the centre as well. So just uh, blow that to cool that down. I'm just going to trim out of a shot here, the, the little bit of over spill from the, um, the solder. and just tweak up the center pin. So we should have something like that when it's it's there. It could be cleaned uh, a little bit more, just with a small few brushes on the uh, knife and so on along the edge. Once done, take the, the center and push it over the top and that will sit over that little rubber washer that we had there uh, and then everything else can shift up level with the center once that's pushed into place you can see that that's now um, solid on there and twisted into place and then for the spanners so in this case I've used a, an adjustable spanner or um, shifting wrench as I think our American friends would call it just to tighten the compression fitting up behind and that's now pretty secure on there and you can see if you have a look that it's just a little bit off uh, off center with that pin so I can use uh, the long nose pliers just tweak it uh, from the edge inside there just to give a small tweak to where you want it to sit and then that's pretty much um, solid and pretty much in there so that's it on the uh, the Westflex 103 you can now put the copper cap on there personally I'd put a small amount of um, glue lined heat shrink on the back here heat that up and uh, further protect the back end from any water ingress normally this section would be pointing down and it does have the rubber seal in there but if you've done it with the uh, the uh, glue fill or glue lined heat shrink as well uh, then that makes a nice um, a nice solid job hope that was of use thanks again and uh, please subscribe